Believe me that from time to time I do not only sit and I am a member, <laughs> but I also work. Uh, I work uh, mainly with the people who uh, created uh, something what I call uh, intellectual in and implementation movement called Organized Economy. Uh, Organized Economy Summit is something what we organize for the first for the first time this year in Krakow, but I will come to this event at the end of my presentation. Social time space is one of our uh, category, research category, and also intellectual category. We try to explain different uh, economic phenomena and behavior of economic actors. Thank you organizers for inviting me. And because I wouldn't like to forget, thank you that you are going to launch your, your Polish chapter of your organization. I wish you good luck and good work. Uh, open Ice Economy is a movement oriented to create a balance between two different traditions of economic science. Tradition of uh, science uh, as social science, economy as social science, tradition of Aristotle, uh, Smith, and second, uh, let's say, source and second uh, branch of uh, economic science as <coughs> exact science. And we consider that there is no balance between those two traditions and we would like to create a balance and therefore we developed something what we call economy of values. At the beginning of my presentations, I would like to show you some basic assumptions of what we understand by economy of values. Firstly, according to our thinking, values are created, are not declared, are not only something to believe. Values are created and they are created in a social process. And this is a process in which we link individuals and communes. Very important distinction is the, a distinction between existential and instrumental values. And we consider this distinction as fundamental and we try to say that existential values result from community and help sustain communities. Instrumental values have practical meaning and they enable our activity <coughs> in achieving particular goals. Very important is the relation, how we understand the relation between creation of existential and instrumental values. And when generating instrumental values based on existential values, we have to be careful that the instrumental values do not overpower the existential one. Because if they destroy existential values, the economic process is not sustainable. And if organization does not generate instrumental values, will collapse. But if do not generate existential values, it will be not able to develop. Before we understand that there are two different axes and they co-evolve within organization, within city, within university, within the human space. One axis is the axis of existential values creation, existential values, norms, good actual normative order, so institutional order. And the second axis, the instrumental values, resources, capital, assets, goods, operational order. When we explain our concept of firm idea, then we say that the firm idea is the firm in which, in his unique way, try to create different dimensions. One, institutional order, the order of creation of existential values in the second order, the operational functional order, the order in which we create <coughs> instrumental values among them, profit. <coughs> it 
it's for the beginning. The movement, the organized uh, economy movement, is not the movement within academia. We try to go uh, behind our walls. We work with many different groups of people. Therefore, we organize a lot of meetings <coughs> in which we discuss practical issues. Therefore, I call this movement the issue according to open eyes economic principles and especially how to use the notion of social time space to understand the issue. How to look for solutions. One of the basic concepts and notions when we discuss the issue of water within the city is the question of water resilience. But generally, resilience is highly discussed all over the world because of uncertainty created by many, many different risks. And the question is how to understand resilience. In a more stable world, resilience was understood mostly as adequate safeguards, and especially safeguards against the floods. Now, resilience is discussed in a much more active way, in which the resilience is the result of combination between the safeguard. So the question is, to be resilient means not only how to mitigate risk, but also how to transform how to make your resources more productive. So when we discuss the water as the resource, we do not discuss about floods, but we discuss, for example, about health. And we look for relations between water and health. The question is, how to link different resources, how to link parts of your potential to be productive? And the process should lead us to the much higher quality of life. This is the essence of this way of thinking. And if you would like to see, according to the span, on the one side, productivity of your resources and potential, on the second hand, as the result, quality of life, the problem is that you have to consider the issue using the time, social time space perspective. Without, without using the social time space perspective, you are not able to link different resources, to link different groups, to link different aspects of thinking, different modalities of action. I took some slides from the paper givers from speakers on this Congress which started, which was organized some days ago. I use them also when I summarize the whole Congress, just to show how the people discussing the water city problem, the water city issues, how they frame the problem. It doesn't mean that I frame in the same way, but anyhow, I would like you to show how they frame the problem. Uh, this is James Grelia from Exeter University. Uh, presented a very important paper on Blue Palace solution. So what kind of water arrangements are favorable to upgrading of uh, health in, in, in cities? And he presented something what is a conceptual model. So those people, <coughs> they try to find their conceptual model, their kind of mindset when they start to discuss the issue. And I think that it's very suitable to think at the beginning, starting from particular conceptual models. I also use such conceptual models when I discuss social time space. Another slide taken from this guy is about Blue Health practical solutions. And what kind of information is important for me. He's discussing the intuitive knowledge. So he says, <coughs> people, they have some intuition. They have a kind of uh, intangible knowledge. Some kind of knowledge they do not praise pretty often, but they know their needs. 
They know what is good for their health. If they are very near the water or if they are in forest, they feel better. And it's an intuitive knowledge. They make this choice if they have a possibility. So let's think how to create, how to allow them to create their surrounding using measures we have on one hand and to link bringing those measures to their real needs. The second speaker, I took something, is Sedo Maximovich from London College. And he is discussing the question of climate change adaptation of cities. And he is saying, so far we discussed particular issues, but let's discuss something that is more integrated, because there are several approaches. We should discuss about health, transport, ecosystem services, waste, water treat treatment. So look to a much broader picture. Because if you look only seeing the water and the problem of flood, then of course you will be not able to solve the, the issue. Here's a some simple presentation from the professor from New York. New York was devastated by the hurricane Sandy in 2012. It was really very great disaster for, for a huge big city. What he is discussing, he is saying, adaptation to climate change is not enough. We need transformation. We need something that is not responsive, something that is proactive. We have to think about the future, and about the general adaptation, not about only adjustment. Adjustment is not enough if we discuss this kind of issue. <coughs> New York is one of the examples, classical examples of something what is called heat island in, in big cities. Temperature was growing much higher in cities than outside the cities. If we discuss about 1, 1.5 percentage, Celsius percentage, in cities we have in 100 years <coughs> grown temperature over 2 percentage. Uh, uh, Therefore, people now, now they try to say we have to create something that is in opposition to the heat island, and Manhattan is changing. And it's also safeguards against flat against hurricanes, but it also something that is very important uh, for different diseases in the cities, and they created island which is called Blue Green Island in at Manhattan. This is Manhattan. Sometimes, however, when we discuss those solutions, and this is an example from Milano, when they have the new condos created by huge capital, and they have very intelligent buildings, buildings which are sufficient, self-sufficient in water, they have their green <coughs> spaces, but they are very costly. And people mostly who are coming here to the cities, they are coming for the uh, fur, in design firms in Milano, they come for short period, and therefore this is not a real solution for the problem we discussed. This is quite opposite, because this is the, the, the example of codification of the positive idea. And this is the danger, that in all cases, at the end of the year, you may see how our ideas are codified or commercialized. Quite opposite example, coming from the surroundings of Monday in Sweden, when you have the solution, blue, green solutions, but with a real involvement of children and inhabitants. They are active participants of these surroundings. <coughs> so that they, therefore they protect it. This is not, this, it was not created by somebody else and given to them. They created it. It's on their own, but of course they have uh, capabilities and they have 
possibilities to do that. Let me move from those examples to something that is more important for my way of thinking. But still I add to Water Economy Water City Congress. This is a presentation by uh, a Dutchman, D. Alt, who is very active in banking system. And he is discussing the issue of water treatment and water exploitation in cities from the investor perspective. And he is saying that here you have typology of investors, typology of instruments, we need some additional info instruments. Impact investors, green and climate bonds. And he is saying we have 25 years, not only to solve the problem of climate change in cities, we have also 25 years to find the proper sources of capital to solve the issue, because those are very highly uh, intensive uh, in, uh, investments. Infrastructure needs a lot of capital, a lot of resources. And the folk is saying how to make it that money and water will talk to each other. And if we need this relation to build, the question is we need we need intermediate institutions, and he present those intermediate institutions. Let me leave for part of my presentation the Congress and Water. Let's discuss what is, from my perspective, much general. Here we have the presentation in which we see how difficult is the question of investment in the contemporary economy? Because actually there is an excess of savings and lack of productive investments. What we call today an investment is a gain on financial assets. This is not Schumpeterian investment. This is not investment in traditional sense. Something what is oriented to be more productive. This is a gain for profits. And the problem is that because of aging, the whole process is, is leading us to the situation in which on the one hand we have a growing needs, on the second hand we have a growing savings, but there is no relation between them. No solution between capital and needs. Money is making money. This is a close loop game in which more and more firms enterprises are not enterprises, but they are gamblers. The result is that in a contemporary economy, there are quite fresh data from mid of this decade. We see that savings are in enterprises and debt in households and in governments. So we have negative investments in governments and we have positive investments in enterprises, but they do not invest. They have savings, they have capital, but they do not invest. They play with the money, they create a movement within the financial markets, but they do not invest. On the one hand, you have entitled spendings decided by governments. On the second hand, you have investments. More and more requirements, more and more spending, social spendings, less and less investment. As a result, we have a situation in which productivity is not growing in the contemporary economy. Co productivity understood in a very general sense when we discuss about the productivity of different resources. And this is the problem, because the economy is going on. Huh? 
demise going on, but problems, social problems, are bigger, and there is no link between the capital, enterprises, activities, productivity, and the solutions of the question of quality of life. How I try to understand the problem. Here you have the graphic presentation of four different types of perception of economic activity. Why people understand investments as they understand it now? If you have the portfolio of huge manufacturing firms in Germany, many of them, they change the portfolio four times. Bigger share of profits are coming from the assets gain, not from <coughs> the innovation and productivity. It concerns many huge manufacturing firms. Apple of this day is not the Apple of Steve Jobs. This is much more the platform offering different applications, different apps, than a real producer of innovative vehicles or innovative solutions. The problem is that the economy is oriented to transactions. When you understand economic activity as deal, as transaction, then your perception is very narrow. What is important for you? How you understand the space and how we understand time? There is no limit regarding space. This is a global economy. But on the other hand, the time is understood in a very short horizon. Make your deals immediately, in part of six seconds. If you play financial assets game, then you use fintechs to fasten your activities, to make your transactions more often. The marginal profit is not so important. If you make a mass transactions, mass pay payments, your profit could be very, margin could be very small, but the capital will, will be created very soon. So this is based, this type of perception of time space of your activity is a basic, uh, is a basic understanding of something what we call linear economy. Linear economy in which there is only one part of economic activity you, you are taking responsibility. What is your profit from particular transaction? What is your profit from particular debts? What is before? What kind of resources you took? What will be after? It's not your problem. You have your profit. You make your transaction. You play your game. What is the reaction for the linear economy? We try to say, let's create something where it's a circular economy. But how people understand the circular economy? Most years recycling. And most years waste recycling. What is waste recycling? This is the dream that all the economy we we'll solve the problem of waste and the linearity when we create the close loop. Therefore, those people, they say, what we need, actually, is a narrow, close circle. <coughs> yes. Let's close the loop. If we close the loop, there will be no externalities. But it's not possible. You can't close the loop of economic activity. You may do it in a very routinized way. In an advanced firm, for example, if you had the water and sewage company in the city, you may discuss how to close the loop of water. And people believe this is a solution. No. Recently, whenever we try to close the loop of water, and we have the climate change, we have this, this type of floods, which never occurred so often before. Those are not floods coming from river, but from showers. But the showers of this day, if we try to 
everything to have in pipes will be much more stronger than your pipes. Than your pipes. You will never create such huge pipes in we will not stop the climate change, but the climate change is going on. We have more and more huge problems. In Gdańsk, every year is a flood recently. And this is not the river flood, this is a shower flood. And therefore, we understand now that we have to change our thinking. We have the different type of solutions. Why we are looking for uh, green roofs? Why we are thinking about parks, about water parks? Because we understand that the retention of water is not possible only in, in pipes. <coughs> so people they try to move to something what is a more open circularity. We understand, of course, that we if we have the open circularity, then of course we try to include aspects of economic activity which were not included in your sheets, in your balance sheet, in your books, in your accountings. <coughs> but how to include it? And the question is that if you have the open circularity, you change your time perspective. You change your reference points because you include other, other players, not only you, you as a player on, let's say, your partners in, in transactions, but also those who have some of resources which are needed to solve the problem. For example, <coughs> investors, uh, urban planners, because to solve the problem of the water, it's this integrating solution of, of Sero Maximovich, of different types of actors, because they have part of resources. Part of resources are on other hands, and you have to include them if you would like to solve a real problem. But if you think in this way, that at the end of the day we are, we are coming to the understanding that the nature of economic activity is spiral. The question is that time space actually is an ontological, epistemological and methodological notion and category. But if we do not understand it, and we think that we may close the economic activity in transactions. The result is disastrous because of the growing externalities. It means that we have to understand that how the time space is working in economic activity has a crucial significance for the sustainability or unsustainability of economic activity. Before I will move, I would like to summarize. People who are discussing the water in the city, they now propose dynamic approach, transformation, productivity orientation. They discuss about their understanding of social time spans. They understand the, the, the closed loop closed loop solutions will not work, will create new danger, new threats. They understand that they should open time space and try to open time space to bring different actors and different measures and different instruments, include them, integrate them. They understand that they have to change the perspective when he Alex is saying investors do not understand what will happen in 25 years, because for them the investment in infrastructure, this water infrastructure, is risky and not profitable. He's saying try to see not now, but try to see in a much more broader perspective. If you will not finance it, this will kill you. So change your perspective. Not, do not think, I have no interest. Think in what kind of interest you may have in 25 years 
So try to, to, to find your future of your business in the future of the world. Try to contribute, if you would like, to other stuff, to stop the, what is going on. Try to change your perspective. And we, if we discuss the issue in this way, then there is a choice at the end of the day, people understand. One thing is that the spiral is working, but it may work as the vicious circle, bringing us down, or it may work as something what I call development circularity, developmental spiral. But when it works, when we approach the time perspective of our activity, we include the time perspective in our calculation and in our responsibility. And this way of thinking creates new opportunities for operations, new possibilities for business activities. However, they are coming as the result of real social transformation, especially as the result of change of social relations and social ties. What I was discussing with you, I was discussing the question of meaning. I was discussing the question of knowledge. I discussed the questions of incentives. But I also discuss with you the questions of roles, relations, institutions. I do not neglect the tone box, but I also discuss with you something what is imagination and responsibility. And therefore, I would like to say there is no solution on only one level. We need three different types of knowledge to solve the problems. A knowledge which is to a certain kind of objective, which is at the level of technical solutions. The knowledge <coughs> about norms and rules. <coughs> and the knowledge which creates the social imagination. Not mentality in a general sense. Expectations of people, understanding what is good for them. Imagination not of the world, but imagination of firm, imagination of city, imagination of university, imagination of your place and your activity. Is it possible that we create such imagination? Is it possible that we will have chance to make it? Yes, I do believe. Once again, I'm coming to the question of water. However, now I discuss about fire. Sweden has no problem big with water, but in this country they have this year 50 big uh, fire uh, forest fires. They were not prepared for such phenomena, which are new in their country, completely new. And they discuss now about the relations about the citizen about the commune and about the state. Once again, they have to discuss it. They have to understand that to solve the problem which they never envisaged before, and this is a serious problem for the nation, small nation, 50 big forest fires. They have to create a new type of discourse. They call it driving discourse. And this is not a discourse about fire and about forest. This is a discourse between the relation between citizen, commune, and the government. They have to discuss it not just to change rules, <coughs> clauses, but to change their mind, to change their relations. Then they will come to the changing of clauses. If they start with clauses, they will not solve a real problem, existential problem. Because they discuss now existential problem. So the issue is also about the social adaptation. 
no level of technology. And now let me say, I didn't realize that the topic of your conference is as it is. I work with another group of something what is called common link and commons in the contemporary economy. If I would like to say, okay, this is a very theoretical, but give us practical examples. Give us practical examples. Let's take the example of water. What will be as a result of privatization of water and water uh, systems? If we discuss the climate change, completely disastrous. What we need, we need to understand whenever we privatize and individualize part of the important resources, on the other hand, we have to, to create another part of those resources, which are common link. Not every time commons, but common link. For example, knowledge. Part of the knowledge which, which we need is the knowledge which is co-created, which is a knowledge which is common link. This is a particular example of common link as the result because if without common link of knowledge, we will not find the proper solutions to existing problems. So the question is how to create driving discourses and one of the driving discourses regarding forests is what to do against new inclosures. Because the contemporary world is a world of new inclosures. This is a world of inclosures at the level of global, at the level of technology, but at the level of co at the communal level. And the, we, we, we have to stop this discussing how to use resources to solve a real existing problem, pro problem and organized economy is saying from productivity to quality of life. And it's not against the private property. But this is also against the understanding of the private property of shoes as the pri private property of data. Because they are different type of goods. And they are completely different results of privatizations of material goods and privatization <coughs> of meanings, of programs, of codes, data and information. Final thoughts. The problems we have in contemporary economy is a pressure of efficiency against productivity. We discussed about the results and about the resources. Recently, the calculation, the account is an account of the results and not an account of resources. If so, the economic activity, especially because of globalization, financialization and digitalization, is the economy of idle race. This is the economy in which there is less productivity and less possibilities to solve a real existential problems. Even we are more affluent, we have more on our accounts, part of us, we have more on our accounts. If you would like to change it, we should have to discuss about the values, the meaning of values, and not only about economic values, about the relation between existential and instrumental values, and especially to link the basic category, which is productivity of resources to quality of life. And quality of life is not a goal, it's a mechanism. It's a leading mechanism to solve the problem, the economic problems. Uh, before we continue our work, and I discuss more about the water city, so next Economy of Water City Congress is in Brussels in mid-October, but the most important for me event is coming soon, 1920s of uh, November, for the first time we meet here in Krakow. Last, last year we had two, two and a half thousand uh, participants, we expect three thousand people, and there is a growing interest of this type of discourse about the organized uh, economic discourse. Part of the issue concerns firms, because firstly we are looking for, for microeconomic solutions, however, the background of the thinking is macro economy. Thank you very much.
time for short uh, questions, if you wish. There's no one else. I, I, I was going to ask you on your position of privatization versus publicly run or managed water uh, supplies. And then at the very end, you, you took a very clear position uh, that, that I can only agree to. But I'd be curious in all the discussions you're having, which are the main arguments you hear in favor of privatizing um, uh, water, and what are your, your counter arguments? I think that uh, people more and more they realize that the full privatization of the water system will not work. People oppose it because you will exclude many possible inhabitants and participants. And this is the same with any type of resource. What does it mean that you privatize knowledge? That you use the intellectual property rights uh, requirements and protection regarding, for example, uh, uh, medicine services. You mean that you exclude part of your potential from activity. And therefore, I do not discuss s simple, static division and reimbursements and, uh, and, uh, and uh, division. I discuss about the economic process, which is not the process of growing, but the process of development of our potential to solve the problems which will, which are present and will come because of different reasons. I am not a specialist who may answer what these are uh, reasons, what are causes of the climate change, but we can't close our, our eyes and say there is no climate change. We have for 100 years Figures about temperature. And we, we see what is going on in big cities when you have, the, in our cities, for three nights, the temperature over 30 uh, in days and over 20 in, in, in nights. Huh? People are dying, and 40% of dying old people during such short period of three nights in days over 30% and nights over 20% Celsius degrees. In our cities, because those are temperature for our cities. So we have a lot of evidence and very stable figures about what is going on. And let's discuss about the causes and how to change this, this something what is moving over us. But we have to do something with that now and not in the way we will change but the way in which we will not only adapt, but transform. But if you transform, then on the other hand, we are really more resilient regarding the causes. Because transformation is not just simply following the problem, but we look for possibility to solve the problem. Therefore, I am using this perception of social imaginary, because social imaginary is something that is not just, let's say, awareness. It's, it's much more than people, they understand the situation, they propose a solution, and they have also a kind of expectations that they will, they will be, that their proposals and their activities will be, will be treated seriously. And therefore, creation of social imaginary of your city of your instrument is something very important when this imaginary is created strongly, when there is something what is common and common. When you understand that part in the city there is not only commercial space, but there is a public space. When there is a public space, people feel obviously this is my city, this is my space. <clears throat> when they have no rights, or real rights, when they are not entitled, endorsed, they do not think in this way. They think in a completely different way. So what does it mean that you, you, you create a public space? You create particular kind of space. Because part of public space 
have a different time horizon of activities. If the people, for example, you would give them culture house in their hands and say, no, no, this is not for civil servants. This is for you. And let's do this type of cultural activity, if you would like to discuss about the education, uh, cultural education of the city, so that, let's say, uh, 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 activate them, do it on their own, we will give you possibilities. Now they think in completely different perspective, because they also see different generations. Yeah? And this is not a discussion about something theoretical as the uh, let's say justice, uh, multi-generation uh, justice. This is particular discussion about multi-generation uh, justice. And on this ground, the social imaginary is created. And this is a driving discourse which uh, brings people to the problem much more, and also their knowledge. Therefore, I say that each organization has to have those two dimensions, this axiomatic dimension when we discuss existential, and this operational dimension. And I don't see that there is a real problem to link them. If you understand that you have to create a sustainable process of your economic activity. If you think not about sustainability, but only about efficiency and profits, of course, outside the perception, then of course you may say a lot of good words, but you do wrong. We have one more. Uh, thank you, Professor Hausman, for your interesting presentation. Uh, I'm not sure whether I understood everything you said, but one of the main problems uh, I see in the presentation is that you are starting from the idea that, uh, that there, is a, there is money, there is in the bank, bank accounts of people, and that it should be invested in a kind of economy that is. Uh, developmentally circular. Um, and, but what I missed in your presentation is the uh, huge amount of uh, debt uh, uh, that we have today. In fact, it seems, I'm not an economist, but according to economists, that the debts uh, are larger than what we have in the bank accounts. So there is no room, no place for, for investments. Uh, so there are only some instances who can make these investments, and these uh, are instances who are uh, mainly investing on the linear uh, uh, economy, I would say. Uh, so my question is about this. Actually, the contemporary economy, uh, in the contemporary economy, when you observe the process of value of Global product is growing, but it's growing much slower than the value of global financial assets. So we, uh, there is a great and growing discrepancy between the global financial assets and the growing uh, product. Why? Because assets, they created their own circle and their own game, and the product is another issue. And I think that we have to link the real product and the value of the product of goods and services and the value of financial assets. There is no simple solution. But the solution is more and more difficult if there is this situation in which we observe now that we have a negative. Recently we have been in the most advanced economic countries, we have a negative dynamic of real product potential problem. Negative. Why? Because the, the biggest minds, the biggest, let's say, intelligent people, what they play? They play a game on assets. <coughs> they create profits on assets, not on, on a real activity. On, a, on an activity which is oriented to productive, productive use of resources. And this is a growing problem. And therefore, on the one hand, you have a lot of indebted people, and you have your excesses, excessive savings in banks and different financial institutions. And they do not, they look for something to invest, because they do not know what to do with this excessive amount of money. 
One of the issues why they take this game because they receive individual profits, individual shares. They are paid better than ever. So they love this game. But as the result of this game, we are less and less, the, the, the dynamics of the productivity is less and less. It result productivity will not be able to face a real existential problems. Not only because of climate change, because of many different reasons. Yeah. And this is the <coughs> basic problem, and there is no simple solution. Whatever banks do, now we have, a, you know, let's say we are a definition of new recession, whatever the governments do, they are creating more, well, let's say, uh, fluid money to solve the problem against recession. They do something that is opposite in the longer run, but they say what is in short run. The short, short, short sightedness is the greatest problem that I so often discuss about time perspective of economic activity. Because in short term, let's take the city. That's very simple. The city is a space of conflict between different groups which would like to invest in this particular place. Sometimes you may need different functions, but it's not very easy in the case of material base. When you have chance, to overcome the conflict when you bring the time to your thinking. When you bring the time, when you see the consequences, negative and positive consequences, then you may bring people and to say, okay, let's agree for this type of solution. But if there is no time perspective, everything is fighting for their own interest. Nobody is interested to, to have something that is a common. Because what, 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 there is no any interest. Commoning and commons require, let's say, much longer way of thinking and relation, rela different type of social relations. Because this is not a logic, but this is a social relation perspective to that. Okay. Two, two more questions. Hello, my name is Carlos. I come from Colombia. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I want to ask about education within your presentation. Um, so I, I will try to put an example of what I'm thinking. Um, um, with my wife, we're trying to raise two kids. Um, and every time that I have a problem, or no, every time that I visit my mother, I tell her the challenges we were facing with our kids. And she always started laughing at me and I started remembering because we are six. She has six children. So she always started like, reminding me, just and I started reminding everything that happened with us. So in a way she had a time space perspective. And uh, she was saying, Look, this is what happened. So every time that she started like laughing and telling stories about how she raises us, she was sending me, for me, this message, which is, uh, you need to have a long-term perspective about uh, educating your children. Don't try to look for the picture of today, what happened today or yesterday. So in a way, that's the message that I received from your talk. It's we need to have this sustainable, um, circular, open circular, um, spiral time uh, vision of things. But we have education uh, and that is normally linear, that is very uh, short term education. So if everything that I have said is okay for you, from your perspective. What does, what is happening, I don't know if in Poland, or what should happen in terms of your talk with education, because you should start with families. Families should start like uh, raising their babies with this sustainable time-space perspective. And then they will go to schools, and then schools will have to have this uh, uh, time-space perspective and then professors should have that and go on and on and on. 
So what would be your advice? That's Simply I agree with you, but let me say that uh, pretty often I, 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 I heard and I hear uh, such a statement. You're right, but if, you, if I think about your talk, if I think about your presentation, then I think that we need completely new society, at least new generation. So we will wait 25 years. And I answer, if we wait, our children will be never raised in another way than we were growing. We have to change ourselves to be able to create another type of education for our children. Simply. They will not create the education system for them. They will not create the socialization environment for them. If we do not create, they will be as we are. Very similar. Of course they will they will they will, they will have new technologies, new possibilities. But they will be as blind as we were for many, many, many years, for many, for many decades. So we have to think not that the future will come with the new generation. The future will come now because the future is creating now. We create the future now. This our life. If we would like to have another type of future, we have to change what we do now at once. To change our relation to our students, to change our relations to different uh, types of our activities. What I do in my time, and those who are from Krakow and those who know me, they know that I it's a it's a it's a true I learned. I started to create my in my university environment twenty three years ago, and I do that very in a very very you know, let's say. Uh, determined uh, way. And I create students in another way. And I created my social environment when many people, they, they, they support each other, they cooperate with each other. There is completely different culture. I have no problem with many business people. I have no problem with many... I have... I, I, I'm open to work with them, and I work with them, and I created a lot of different... And I leave now to younger people. Whatever I create, such, I leave it to younger people. Do it better. Be better. Be better than others. It's my doubt that you will be better. So, I, I, I think that, it's, as, as I said about the, 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 the new, the philosophy of Adaptation to climate change will not allow us to solve the problem, to overcome. We will be not resilient. The only, trans the only possibility is to transform. Whenever we discuss about the energy in Poland, and everybody is saying, but what you are talking about? You know, we now our energy is based in 82% of, of coal. How do you like to change it? And I'm saying, I would like to change it completely, but not immediately, but completely, as the process of transformation. But if I do not start now, I will never change. And I don't know what will be at the end. Because it is not discussion about from 82 to 22 percentage of coal as the energy uh, resource. This is discussion about completely different type of thinking about energy, because the part of the problem is not on the on the uh, supply side, but part of the problem is on, on the demand side. In economy, both sides are very important. So we have to start the process of transformation and just to monitor. Whenever we are, we have created more space, more time. And more resources to solve our existential problems. If, so, if we do that, we create more sustainable world. And this is what I may say, and this is a very promising. We may do that. And I will give you the medaling as the, as the city, which are, of course, I don't know, but, uh, but I know from, from different <coughs> readings, how this city was changed. How the medaling was changed from this type. Uh, when the, the gangsters ruled the, the city, how they changed the situation in the city. And how the Fayando, as the, as, the, as, as the mayor of the city, was 
try to, to change the ideas behind the people's activity. And they succeeded, maybe partly, but they succeeded. Barcelona had the problem with over tourism, but they had to change the problem. They will not leave the tourists from the city, but they had to find a balance between the inhabitants and tourists. We have a lot of problems, uh, which are purely existential. And I think that this is a very promising when we say, okay, let's move towards a proper direction, let's think about different time perspective and different relations, because this is the ground from which we will find a proper instrument. Without the social imagination, without the social knowledge, without the institutional framework, without the meaning and mindset, we will not find proper, proper tools. Don't start from tools. Start from thinking over. Uh, yeah, it will be short. I thank you for a very inspiring uh, talk. I have a question about solutions. Uh, because it seems to me that the, the most powerful actor is the one that are holding uh, most of the resources that we have, the, the ones that uh, the government and, and the households are in debt, and the money is on the side of the like, corporations. And they are the ones who refuse to take long care. Uh, so, how, how do you get them on board? They have got their own enemies as well. Uh, they have their own enemies, for example, banks. They have these uh, platforms, virtual platforms, payment platforms, which try to overcome the banking business. And they say to them, uh, for example, Amazon, and uh, Jeff Bezos is, is talking to people from the Citibank, uh, JP Morgan, and Golden Sachs. Guys, have your deposits and have your credit. Leave me payments. I have better, better applications. I will make a job. I will make a deal. I will make a business on payments and I will leave you credits and deposits. But the margin on deposits and credits is four times less than on payments. So now the banks think how to be honest, how to make the banking activity on, on payments. What is the answer? Some of banks didn't realize that this is a danger for them. <coughs> and if those huge banks they do not understand, think about the local bank. Think, think about the regional bank. Think about financial institution is a part of your environment. This is a solution. And for example, I know quite well one of Dutch banks which have, uh, which is a private bank here. And I have the leader of this bank, I know this guy very well, when he said, no more credit and no more any type of loans for those who do a business in Poland based on coal. <laughs> Why? Is, is it real banking activities? And he's saying two things, he said. Yes, I think that's a bank. I think that's a good product. Firstly, it's very risky business. I, will not uh, discuss, because when we discuss about climate change, when we discuss about the regulations, world regulations, and we discuss about investments in coal and energy based on coal for 20, 30 years, I will not predict this activity, because it's very risky. It's very risky. It's a bit, bit, according to our system of accounting, it's not a good business. It's too risky. And I have no, I have no particular tools how to mitigate this risk. On the other hand, there is a systemic risk. And the issue of systemic risk is very important. Now, when we discuss about the financial system, the problem is that Lehman Brothers' collapse is not the collapse of Lehman Brothers. It's a collapse of financial system. And the collapse of the financial system is a collapse of, of, of economic system. And the collapse of the economic system is a collapse of the social system. So let's discuss about the systemic risk. Why do we discuss only about banks, that they are too big to fail? Why not discuss about Amazon? Amazon is too big to fail. So do not agree for systemic risk. And if we discuss about systemic risk terms, then of course we understand that some solutions 
some type of products, some type of technologies are too risky according to our knowledge and to our, according to our respons responsibility. Do not agree. Even some people will have less profit, it's better for us. And it's not only a safeguard. It's something what I call resilience. This is also part of the positive part of resilience. Do not agree for everything. Choose positive possibilities. There are many of them which are positive. And this, they are not only, let's say, one side and second side. We, are, we have to, to find a, a, a way which is, which is, which is, which is a, a way in which we <coughs> minimize the systemic risk. We will never avoid them. And even if they are, we have to be very cautious regarding practical uh, solutions. And this guy, if he says this, this is not just a phrase uh, set on converts. This is this way of thinking of this guy. They are also, uh, they also open the minds and eyes. More and more people are coming to those congresses we organize all over Poland. And five years ago, they were saying, you know, you look like European socialist. And now they're saying, not only they say, yes, let's, let's look for another way of thinking, let's look for another solutions. And we work on practical solutions. For example, we show to firms how the <coughs> traditional way of intellectual property right protection is not a, a, a good economizing of, of the uh, intellectual uh, property and potential. So there are different measures to use it better. For example, uh, something what we call uh, conditional diffusion of your, <coughs> of your intellectual assets, intangible assets. And we work in practical terms how to solve the, the issue. And here we are bringing, uh, we are more and more here people uh, discussing about the managerial aspects of the issue. I discussed about economic uh, aspects of the issue, but we need each other. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.